I'm Coco. And I'm Breezy, and we're co-founders of Coco and Breezy Eyewear. Well, us growing up in the suburbs, we grew up between Apple Valley and Chenhassen. And as you know, during that time when we were in high school and middle school, it wasn't very eclectic. And so we were those girls that had like crazy red hair, mohawks, we had piercings, we dressed very, very different. And that caused us to get bullied. A lot of people thought we were weird. They didn't understand us. And so that's how we found our love for sunglasses. We started just buying cheap sunglasses, vintage frames, and wearing them to avoid eye contact with these people who didn't understand us. And then we knew that we were creative and we were artists, and we started designing our own eyewear. And growing up in, that, in a town like that where being different could be looked down upon, we felt that we used the internet as a resource to express our fashion style. And so that's when social media started like really being popular. And we used MySpace as an outlet to share our personal style. And then we noticed that people from the East Coast, which was like New York, Maryland, they started following our brand. Even people from London. They started following our brand, they started following our story. And we were 16 years old with like 30,000 friends on MySpace. From there, we were like, okay, we have a huge following. What can we do to actually make sales? All right, we put two and two together. We have a huge following. We want to start our own business and we love sunglasses. Match the two, let's start an eyewear company. Growing up, we like just loved New York just from watching movies, watching TV shows. I always like, whenever I've seen a TV show or a movie and that girl had like the American story where she like quit her job, slept in her car, we were like, mom and dad, that's gonna be us one day. Like, we want that story. And when we were 17, we went to New York by ourselves. Just to visit. Just to visit. I mean, we were like 15 having our own jobs. When we were 17, we had three jobs. And so our parents, they knew that we were responsible and they trusted for us to go to New York by ourselves. And so we started going to New York by ourselves and we just fell in love. We felt like we were actually at home and we didn't, that was our first time feeling like we could be ourselves 100% without people staring, looking at us and pointing fingers. And so from there, we would go to New York a couple times a year, and we were just like, you know what, we, we have to move here. Move. So for our 19th birthday, that we went to New York for two weeks, shut it down, mm -hmm. people thought we were from New York, they loved our product, they loved our sunglasses, and something in our heart said, we need to move here. At this time. And so we went job hunting, and, and no one called us back, but we went back home, and job finally called us back. They asked us, can we go do an interview? We said, yes, we'll be in New York next week. Um, we're in Minnesota, we packed all our bags, we sold clothes to get some more money, and we just quit our little job at the Mall of America, and we moved to New York with hardly anything. But we had our passion, we had our faith, and we had a goal, and that's what really drove us to work smart and work hard once we got to New York. We didn't get the job that we had the interview for, but we've been working for Coco and Breezy since day one. And it's been six years this month. When we sold our first pair of glasses, that was actually online. Yeah. It was online and it was us using MySpace as a social media. And people were just like, we didn't have a proper website, but people have seen us wearing our glasses online and they're like, how can I buy these? They're like, oh, we'll send you a PayPal request. But when we physically sold our first pair of glasses, honestly, we say that we were walking advertisements because as soon as we stepped off the plane to New York, we were walking around the city and people would come up to us and be like, hey, I like your glasses, here's $100, can I buy them off your face? And that's how and we're I tell able you, people, to pay. People do that all the time, they rent. buy our glasses off our face. And we don't sell them, they just ask, like, I need these, I've never seen them before. That's when we first started. When we first started. Coco and I, we designed everything. Um, actually, one of our biggest challenges as a company, when we first started our company, we shared the same responsibilities because we're twins, we're like, oh, we're both gonna have the same responsibilities. But now that we're growing and our demand is growing, we learned that with our personalities, Coco handles, all. she manages all of our production, all of the logistics, Alongside numbers. Alongside our business partner, Dwayne. And I handle all the designing. I'm the head designer in all of our sales. And when we're in our design process, um, I really pay attention to what the market is and I pay attention to, we, we're creating our own market, so, I create styles that I love, but of course what our customers want. And we start off as a sketch, and a sketch turns into a spec, and we create a cat drawing. So glasses are very, very technical. Um, we have to point out every single measurement, we do all the sourcing, 
all the materializing, and then Coco. And then Dwayne and I were the ones managing the production. So it's pretty insane. Um, as far as like where our glasses can be purchased, I handle all of our sales, and so we're distributed all around the world. And it's amazing to like travel somewhere and like see someone wearing our sunglasses. I think that's like the best feeling to know that all we're like starting something from a sketch and seeing a prototype to like actually seeing a consumer loving and wearing our sunglasses. It was really amazing to um, to be a part of the Youth Prize Summit. It was such an honor to be around young people and even adults. I think that a lot of people, especially a group of Minnesota people, they want to listen to someone that they can relate to. They can relate to us because we're not sitting there telling them a story that didn't happen. We're telling them a story and sharing real experience. And girls from Minnesota and around their age group were in between the girls that were super young and were in between the, the women that were older. And um, it was also amazing because there was all ages. There was a little boy that was there that was probably about six years old asking us intellectual questions even a man that was probably in his 60s. So I think that it was amazing to see the range of the age group and also seeing people that are so interested in starting their own businesses. People that were interested in like doing their own ventures. And we had an amazing time because we did a keynote speaking, but then we also did a Q&A. We did two different Q&As. And it really gave people that personal time to ask us questions. And the Youth Prize team was just so amazing to us as well. And I, I really, I'm really happy that they let us kind of like lead and guide what we thought was best. Because originally for the Q&A sessions, we were going to do a whole like session. But for us, I felt that we wanted, since we were right there in front of people's faces, I wanted them to ask us any questions that they had. And so that's why we turned them into two Q&A sessions for the breakout session. When we were at the Youth Prize Summit, the most important topic that we spoke about to everyone was do not let fear interfere. As an entrepreneur, or even if you're working for someone else, you want to, you know, rise up and be bigger than what you know what you are. You cannot let fear interfere, and I think that topic is so important. And I actually repeat, I repeated myself a few times. I'm like, everyone should write this down. Don't let fear interfere, because that fear stops you from a lot of things. You know, like everyone wants to succeed, everyone wants to accomplish their goal, but fear stops you from a lot. And a lot of people are afraid of falling down on their faces. A lot of people are afraid of failure. A lot of people are afraid of plan A not going how they want it to and they don't want to jump to plan B. And the whole goal of not letting fear interfere is trying and knowing that failure isn't a negative thing. Failure is a positive thing so that you can, you know, go back to the drawing board and have the confidence to step up and to push yourself to the next level. And that's something that we really want to push in people's heads to not be afraid of failure, not be afraid of don't be afraid of being afraid <laughs> and, um, and using that as just like motivation to yourself. And I think that being, not letting yourself or not allowing yourself to be small minded and to really think big. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people only think about now and to really kind of guide your mind to think about the future and think about what you want next. And there might not be a lot of resources in Minnesota, but I think that we took advantage. Since there weren't any resources, we created our own resources. And so there are a lot of things you can do in Minnesota, or if you feel that you do want to move outside of Minnesota, don't let the fear interfere and just go for your dreams. The last words I will make sure that people need to know are, you know, you don't know until you try. I think that we're all afraid of trying something new. But the thing is, it's like, if you try, it may not go your way, but at least if you try, it's not failure. I think that people have all these goals and dreams and ideas but also you can keep saying something, but also execute. Execution is better than just speaking. And for me, I think that something that I would suggest to everyone is don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. I think in order to move forward in life, you have to be uncomfortable. If you feel like you're comfortable, you have to do something that makes you feel on the edge, uncomfortable to move to that next level in life. And I think that it's all about Change isn't bad, it's all about evolving and evolving yourself to think bigger, to think positive. Turn those negative situations into a positive situation. Turn those ideas into results. And so um, every day we're doing like self, we're very like into self and about being positive, loving who you are, knowing your goals and like how can you be better. 
So in order to be like a successful entrepreneur, or just even just be great at anything that you're doing in life, you should always be doing self-improvement. So we listen to like a lot of podcasts, we read about a lot of other entrepreneurs, and you just kind of see what they're doing and how can you use that as motivation to help you grow. Because I think that human beings, sometimes we don't spend time on like evolving and trying to grow with yourself, but every day we're trying to figure out how can we how be can better? We how can we make this blueprint? You know, we're making a blueprint, and there's definitely a way of how you can grow in life. But once you take fear out, you, your eyes just open. And take worry out. I think that you cannot be worried. Um, if you're worried, that stops you from a lot. And Coco and I, we, we really live life on the edge, and we're, we're just not anything that, in another per person's perspective, they might be worried about us. We're like. Okay, something bad happened, how can we be better? Like the other day, Breezy lost her wallet. My friend's over here freaking out. He was like, what's, what's going on? Because she went to go pay for her food. And I was like, oh, I'll just pay for it, Bree. And Breezy goes, oh, I think I just lost my wallet on the bus. My friend's like, oh my gosh. I'm like, why are you freaking out? We're not freaking out. We're just going to call and cancel our cards. And, you know. But why freak out, freak out you or can't... worry about something that you can't control? Exactly. And if you take that in any situation in life, you'll be, you'll be nothing but great. So don't worry about things you cannot control. Figure out the solution. Put that energy of worry into the solution and make it better. I'm Coco. And I'm Breezy, and we're, we're co-founders co of Coco and Breezy. And you're watching Black, Black Music America, America BMA. BMA. Peace.